Picture this, you're standing on a runway in the desert. Midnight, no crowds, no cameras, just silence, except for the faint buzz of floodlights humming against the concrete. Overhead, the moon hangs like a blade, slicing through the dark. And somewhere out there, beyond where satellites can see it, there's a plane, a secret plane, not a fighter, not a bomber, but something stranger, a machine built for one mission, to lift Air Force One, the president's jet, into the sky when everything else has already gone wrong, because there are scenarios where Air Force One can't take off, where runways are gone, satellites are blind, the grid is collapsing, and at that moment, this ghost plane comes to life. But aircraft like this don't just appear. They're built on the bones of giants, machines so massive, they changed what flight even meant. Today, we trace that evolution through 18 aircraft, each one bigger, bolder, and more dangerous than the last. The B-36 Peacemaker. Back in 1946, the Soviet Union was rising, and Moscow was 5,000 miles away. We had no bomber that could reach it, so we built one. Enter the B-36 Peacemaker, a monstrous Cold War colossus with a wingspan wider than a Boeing 747. This wasn't just a plane, it was a flying cathedral. 230 feet across, 400,000 pounds, 10 engines, six pusher props, and four jet boosters screaming across the sky at once. It was the only aircraft in history to fly with 10 engines simultaneously. Pilots called it the aluminum overcast. Enemies called it a nightmare. Cities below could hear it minutes before they saw it. But the B-36 didn't just carry bombs, it carried doctrine. It proved that size could be weaponized, that the sky itself could become a threat. And yet, this was just the opening act. Hughes H-4 Hercules. Howard Hughes didn't care about physics, or Congress, or reality. He just wanted to fly something no one thought was possible. The result? The H-4 Hercules, better known as the Spruce Goose, the largest flying boat ever built, a wooden monster with a wingspan over 320 feet, longer than a football field, and taller than an eight-story building, made of birch, not spruce, fueled by ego, not kerosene. Hughes built it to fly tanks over oceans during World War II, but by the time it was finished, the war was over. The critics were loud, the project was on the edge of collapse, so Hughes did the unthinkable. He flew it once, just 26 seconds, just 70 feet above the water, enough to prove it could fly, enough to make it a legend. The H-4 never flew again, but what it represented, ambition that defied everything, never stopped flying. Boeing 747 Dreamlifter. Boeing had a problem. They were building the 787 Dreamliner, but the parts, wings, fuselage sections, they were too big to ship, too wide for trains, too long for trucks. So they did something insane. They hollowed out a 747, stretched it, bloated it, and called it the Dreamlifter. It wasn't a cargo plane, it was a sky whale, a flying warehouse with a hinged spine that could swing wide open and swallow entire airplane sections whole. With a payload over 250,000 pounds and a volume three times that of a regular 747, the Dreamlifter didn't deliver packages. It delivered planes. Airbus Beluga XL. Boeing wasn't the only one with oversized dreams. Across the Atlantic, Airbus had their own Frankenstein, the Beluga XL. At first glance, it looks ridiculous. A whale with wings. A cartoon comes to life. But this aircraft is no joke. It's Europe's answer to the Dreamlifter, designed to carry the parts of other aircraft inside its balloon-like forehead. Inside, you'll find entire wings, stabilizers, and fuselage sections, moved like puzzle pieces between assembly lines in France, Germany, and the UK. Powered by Rolls-Royce Trent 700s, this thing doesn't cross oceans. It doesn't fly high, but it does something far more important. It keeps Europe's aviation heart beating. 
Lockheed C-5M Super Galaxy. When the U.S. military needs to move a battlefield overnight, they call in the C-5M Super Galaxy. It doesn't just carry cargo, it carries wars. This isn't just a plane, it's a flying warehouse that can lift 280,000 pounds of combat systems, helicopters, tanks, even mobile missile batteries. Its nose lifts upward, revealing a cavernous cargo bay. Roll in from the front, drive out the back, a drive-through airplane, it's so massive, it dwarfs even the 747. And yet, it doesn't just land on perfect runways. It touches down on dust, dirt, and danger. The C-5M has flown into active war zones, delivered aid during disasters, and carried out some of the largest evacuation missions in U.S. history. It doesn't fly pretty, it flies. And still, its reign isn't uncontested. Antonov and 124 Ruslan. In the Cold War arms race, the Soviets didn't just build to match, they built to dominate. Their answer to the C-5 was the Antonov AN-124 Ruslan, a monster in every sense, over 150 tons of cargo capacity, reinforced landing gear, a tilted jaw that devours tanks, locomotives, and mobile command centers. Nicknamed the Flying Warehouse, it didn't care about style, it cared about brute volume. And here's the kicker, even after the Cold War ended, NATO still leased these planes from Ukraine and Russia because nothing else could compete. That's right, the West's most powerful alliance still needed Soviet muscle to move its gear. But Ruslan wasn't the final word, because what came next broke every record. Boeing 747-8 Intercontinental. If the AN-124 was a beast, the Boeing 747-8 was a beauty. The last evolution of the Queen of the Skies, the longest passenger aircraft ever built. Stretching over 250 feet, the 747-8 wasn't just massive. It was magnificent. Designed for global travel, elite luxury, and military might, it carried cargo, heads of state, and billionaires alike. Some variants became flying palaces with bedrooms, boardrooms, even medical suites. Others hauled oil rigs and space gear, but one version, heavily modified, ultra-classified, is expected to become the next generation Air Force One. Still, not even the mighty 747 could claim the skies alone, because just across the Atlantic, Airbus had a different idea, one that didn't just rival it, it dwarfed it. Airbus A380. This is the largest passenger aircraft ever built. The Airbus A380. Two full-length decks, four massive engines, a wingspan so wide that hundreds of airports had to rebuild just to fit it. It could carry over 850 passengers in economy mode or around 600 in luxury layouts complete with showers, cocktail bars, and onboard lounges. The A380 was more than a plane. It was a flying city, but it had a fatal flaw. It was too big, fuel guzzling, infrastructure heavy, and only profitable on a few ultra-dense routes. Some airlines made it a palace, others retired early. Still, when it flew, it flew with grace, quiet, smooth, immense. The A380 didn't just move people, it moved the definition of what commercial flight could be. And while it chased prestige, another plane chased survival. The Illusion Il-76. The Illusion IL-76 doesn't impress with elegance, it doesn't need to. Born in the Soviet Union, it was built to endure, not just battlefields, but the apocalypse. With rugged landing gear, modular interiors, and a rear cargo door that swallows everything from tanks to medical units, the IL-76 became Russia's flying workhorse. It delivered troops in war zones, dropped aid into disaster zones, even flew missions over Chernobyl. This aircraft doesn't care about runways, snow, mud, sand, it lands anyway. Half a century later, it's still flying across Russia, India, China, and dozens of developing nations. It's not the fastest, not the biggest, but it's the one that gets there when no one else can. 
And yet, as it hauled through chaos, another aircraft quietly controlled the skies above. McDonnell Douglas KC-10 Extender. At first glance, it looks like a commercial airliner, but the KC-10 Extender is anything but ordinary. It's a flying fuel station, a lifeline that keeps the U.S. Air Force airborne, continent after continent. With over 300,000 pounds of fuel capacity, this aircraft can refuel jets, bombers, surveillance planes, you name it, mid-air, over combat zones or friendly skies. And it's versatile. With both boom and drogue systems, it fuels American squadrons and NATO allies in the same mission. In the Gulf War, Iraq, Afghanistan, the KC-10 was always there. Quiet, steady, critical. But while the extender kept planes alive, the next aircraft wasn't about keeping things running. It was about carrying the heaviest things we've ever built. Lockheed Martin L M100J. Think of it as the Hercules, but bigger, stronger, and smarter. The LM100J is a civilian variant of the C-130J. Super Hercules, built to go where nothing else can. Oil rigs in the Arctic, aid missions in the jungle, remote outposts in the mountains. It doesn't need runways, it barely needs pavement, and it can cargo directly to the world's modular interiors. It becomes anything it needs to be. Medevac unit, cargo hauler, command post. It isn't glamorous, but in the world of aviation, it's the equivalent of a multi-tool. Reliable, rugged, indispensable. And yet, while it tackled the toughest terrain on Earth, another aircraft was preparing to launch cargo into space. Stratolaunch Rock. The wingspan, 385 feet. That's longer than a football field and a half. And that makes the Stratolaunch Rock the largest wingspan ever flown. But it's not a passenger jet. It's not a war machine. It's a mobile launch platform. Built by a company founded by Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen, the Rock carries rockets to 35,000 feet before launching them into orbit. Twin fuselages, six engines, a center wing designed to carry half a million pounds. Its mission, the cost of satellite deployment, launch hypersonic test vehicles, give the Pentagon new tools for space. It's not loud, it's not flashy, but when it flies, it changes the equation. Because the Stratolaunch doesn't fight wars, it launches the future. And yet, even it isn't the final form. Because what comes next isn't just large. It's a ghost built to carry Air Force One and never be seen. Miasishchev VMT Atlant. Before there was SpaceX, before Stratolaunch, there was the Soviet VMT Atlant. A Cold War brute that didn't carry rockets inside. It strapped them to its back. Engineered from a converted bomber, the Atlant was built to haul components of the Soviet space program, including parts of the Buran space shuttle and intercontinental ballistic missiles. It didn't care about aerodynamics. It was ugly, it was loud, and it worked. Its massive dorsal spine was reinforced to carry external loads held in place with custom clamping frames. And somehow, despite its Frankenstein look, it flew mission after mission. Only two were ever built. But without them, the USSR's dreams of space would have remained grounded. It was crude, but it was crucial. And yet, for all its power, it couldn't match what came next. A machine so large, so capable, it would go on to carry another shuttle and the weight of a nation's hope. NASA Shuttle Carrier Aircraft The NASA Shuttle Carrier Aircraft wasn't designed from scratch. It was a 747, reborn. Two airframes were modified to carry the Space Shuttle on its back, Columbia, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavour. These weren't just symbolic flights. They were practical, moving orbiters between landing and launch sites, missions that couldn't be done any other way. Massive struts, structural reinforcements, stabilizers to control airflow around the mounted shuttle. When these aircraft flew, America watched. 
School children cheered. News cameras rolled. In their final missions, they delivered retired orbiters to museums, crowds lining highways just to see them pass. They weren't secret, but they were legendary. And the aircraft that followed, that one wasn't for display. It was designed to carry the unimaginable. Antonov and 225 Mariah. This was it, the crown jewel. The Antonov and 225 Maria, Ukrainian for dream, was the largest aircraft ever flown. Six engines, 32 wheels, a payload capacity of over 600 tons. Originally built to carry the Soviet Buran shuttle, it evolved into the ultimate heavy hauler. It carried locomotives, turbines, tanks, aircraft, whatever the world couldn't move, the Miraya could. For years, it was the only plane capable of moving certain humanitarian and industrial payloads. Then came 2022. During the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the Miruya was destroyed at Hostomel Airport. It was the end of a legend, but not the end of the story, because some believe its technology, and even its frame, was quietly duplicated for a mission that no one could admit existed. Lockheed C-130 Hercules, the C-130. Hercules doesn't aim to impress, it aims to deliver. Born in the 1950s, this tactical airlifter became aviation's ultimate multi-tool, and when stretched into variants like the C-130J-30, it gained even more muscle. These extended models haul more cargo, cover longer distances, and still land on runways that barely qualify as roads, sand, snow, dirt, nothing phases it. It airdrops supplies, refuels helicopters mid-air, evacuates the wounded, or brings aid where jets can't land. Over 70 nations fly it. Many pilots fly planes older than themselves. While other aircraft chase headlines, this one keeps flying, unseen, but indispensable. Antonov and 22 Anteus. Before the Maria, before the Ruslan, there was the Antonov and 22 Antius. It was the first wide-body aircraft ever built, the largest turboprop aircraft in history, and it sounded like a thunderstorm when it passed overhead. Its four Kuznetsov K-12 engines spun counter-rotating propellers, the loudest ever mounted on a plane. It wasn't elegant, but it was a monster. A 64-meter wingspan, 80 tons of payload, enough to carry tanks, missile systems, even entire platoons. It could land in Arctic snowfields and lift off again fully loaded. And despite its age, some are still flying today. The plane made to transport Air Force One. Most people assume Air Force One can go anywhere. Under normal conditions, it can. The VC-25A is a heavily modified Boeing 747-200EMB, a flying fortress hardened against electromagnetic pulses equipped with military-grade comms and capable of mid-air refueling. But even the most powerful plane in the world has limits. If NORAD is compromised, if communications go down, if the runway is gone, if the chain of command is shattered, then the VC-25A becomes vulnerable, and that's when this plane is activated. Its existence is unconfirmed, its specs are redacted, its movements are unknown, but insiders, analysts, and military sources agree a platform exists capable of lifting the VC-25A into the sky fully intact and disappearing it into a secure domain. Some say it's a modified Antonov. Others believe it's a skunk works marvel, funded through black budgets and Cold War paranoia. What matters is this, it, it's not a backup. It's not a decoy. It's not a symbol. It's a contingency, a mobile bunker, a last resort aircraft built for one thing, to ensure the presidency cannot be destroyed.